Let's be real here, the Golden Wolf Lord boss is annoying. There is usually something in the Spiral Abyss that requires you to play around that specific floor. Unless you have C6 characters and an R5 weapon, then you can do whatever you want. But for normal peasants like me with C0 5-star characters and sometimes not even a 5-star weapon, it's annoying. It's annoying to be forced to bring a Geo character so that I can break these three wolf head things. What are you? So that I'm actually able to do damage to the boss again. Why should I be forced to play a variety of different units to overcome a multitude of varying challenges put forth by the developer in an attempt to make sure that I don't get bored? Or, you know, maybe they're trying to sell more copies of Vito. I don't know. I'm not a game designer. But one thing I think we can all agree on is that the Golden Wolf Lord is frustrating. And I think Zajef said it best. That's what the Wolf Lord does, right? He just makes you angry. That is the purpose of the Wolf Lord. The Wolf Lord is not a boss that's like designed to be challenging or difficult or anything like that. It's designed to make you angry. So with this Spiral Abyss, unfortunately, I am not going to be able to take my favorite character, Child, through it because the Golden Wolf Lord almost requires that you bring Geo units with you to beat him. Psych! Of course I'm bringing Child in here. Child is the best character in the entire goddamn game. So the teams I will be running today are an Electro Charge team or a Taser team in the first half and Team Tortellini in the second half. So these are the teams. Let's get started. It's funny seeing the Perpetual Mechanical Array in here again because I used to struggle with this boss. So I used to think to myself, man, this boss is hard. But in reality, it's because this guy is just a damage sponge. This thing's attacks are really telegraphed and very easy to dodge, so it isn't a difficult boss, but it does have a lot of HP. So we are going to chalk up like Connor did against Ludwig and slap this dumbass DPS check looking ass to the curb. Now, we can get what we actually came here for. Because in the second half, we have... Tortellini. Oh, you touched my ta la la. Mm. Luckily, this side requires far less damage, and nobody is going to ask how I found some of that footage. So even if it takes you a little longer in the first half of this floor, the second half won't require as much time. I don't really have a priority target on this floor because I have Zhongli to break the Geo Fatui's shield if he procs it, so I just kind of attack whoever. And we even have a bunch of extra time at the end to make sure that everyone gets their elemental burst back, like, like, like a lot of time. Like, oh my god. Uh, okay, St Steve, skip forward. What are you doing? Come on, you're falling asleep at the wheel here, Steve. What are you doing? Okay, and there it is. Three stars on the board. Now for floor 12, chamber 2, we start with three guys and only one of me. A very familiar situation. For this, I definitely recommend an electro unit because if you can't just one-tap those robots, then at a certain point they will go invisible and the resistances go up while in this state. But you can destroy the little doohickeys on the ground to spawn a dendro whatchamacallit, it, and if you hit it with electro, you will get a hyperbloom reaction. This will knock the robots out of the invisible state. After that, you have the Pigeon Summoner. After you do enough damage to the Pigeon Summoner, she will summon a goose and ascend to her ultimate form. But luckily, you can just beat her ass before she even powers up, so it's fine. Now, we have my least favorite boss in the entire game, the Golden Dick Cheese. So I start firing some pot shots off at the wolf because it likes to just float in the air out of reach for 30 years. But then when it comes down to fire a laser, I use my burst to do as much damage as I can because you are only going to have one more chance to finish him off after this. So now he becomes invulnerable until you destroy the three wolf heads and this is why we brought Zhang Li because if you place his pillar right on top of these wolf heads then it only takes two elemental skills and they are destroyed but honestly you can run multiple different geo units in this slot you can also run albedo you can run ning guang you can run noel with a favonius greatsword you just got to make sure that you save her burst for this specific section and now that the boss is finally on the ground you can now bend him over and give him what he's been asking for Okay, great, raid boss down. Now let's move over to a better design boss, the Jade Plume Terror Shroom. I actually enjoy fighting this thing. It reminds me of fighting a Kulayaku or a Great Jaggy from Monster Hunter. So this portion is actually pretty fun. But the second section of the final chamber would be insane if Bennett didn't exist in the game. There are so many Rift Hounds in this level and it makes it very difficult to not get corrosion on you. So you want enough healing to be able to heal through all of the corrosion damage. And Bennett being the 6'2 absolute giga chat he is can heal through all of the damage and buff your attack. For this section, you have to play kind of carefully. Holding E with Zhang Li isn't enough to save me here. Everything is against me. My back is against the wall. It's time for me to get serious.
And there it is, child again proving that every floor is a child floor. So if you watched this far in the video, thank you so much for watching and hopefully you will consider subscribing. I will be making a lot more Genshin content in the future and just remember, you don't have to believe in yourself. Believe in me. Believe in the me that believes in you. And I'll see you in the next video.